are now listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Recent IELTS Task 2 questions. Discuss both views and give your opinion. Hello there, IELTS students. My name is Ben Worthington. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at some questions seen by students who are doing the exam. And we're going to look at sample answers for these and basically how to attack them. We've got about three questions, all with the discuss both views and give your opinion. Now, a lot of students do struggle with this. Um, this is one of the issues that we aimed to solve with our online course because day in, day out, we were getting emails and we still do get emails with students saying, I don't know where to put my ideas. I don't know how to organize my thoughts. I don't know how to structure the essay. And this is a very, very common problem. So in the course, we go into this in more detail and we've got a set process. Uh, it's quite straightforward. In this tutorial though, I'm just going to give you an overview on how I attack these because when you know you can do it quite effectively and it's really sort of like the first step, I guess, in a series of steps that help you build a coherent essay. Now then, as you know, I'm Ben and I'm from England and I used to be an English teacher in Spain and I was struggling teaching IELTS for a while. And that's how I got started with this podcast because I started to reach out to prof other professionals, to linguistic experts, to listening experts and interview them and IELTS experts and ex-IELTS examiners. I would interview them, test what worked, uh, interview them, ask them for their strategies, share those strategies and then test them with my students. I threw out a lot that didn't work, kept a lot that did work and that's how I managed to basically build the course, which a lot of students are using uh, day in, day out to pass the IELTS exam. Right then, let's have a look at the first one. Some people prefer one-on-one -on -one lessons while others prefer groups. Discuss both views and give your opinion. Now, I've divided, the way I do this is I split it up. Okay, I allocate a task from the question to a paragraph. So in the first case here, I've got the pros of doing one-on-one -on -one lessons. So the pros, um, it could be, ex uh, I got the pros, and then I've got the pros of the group classes as well. Now what you have to be careful with is that if I had have chosen the pros, for example, the advantages of one-on-one -on -one classes and then the um, disadvantages of groups, it could be sort of like contradicting. It could be the same argument, okay? So, for example, the pros of doing one-on-one -on -one are that you get more attention, okay? And the disadvantages of the groups is that you get less attention and it's the same, it's more or less the same argument. So you have to be really sort of like switched on, that you're not contradicting yourself and that you're not repeating yourself. So in this specific case, I had to catch myself and you have to really just sort of like slow down um, before you start generating your ideas before you even start writing and just make sure that there's no contradiction here with your sides of the argument and so f this is why I decided to go for the pros of one-on-one -on -one and then the pros of the group classes because this way I'm not going to contradict and there's no repetition there so what I will do is I'll say for the pros of one-on-one -on -one classes, you get individual attention. This means that you can progress faster. 
the teacher can adapt to your needs and this is really uh, useful for language learning example why is it good for language learning well in some language classes students there can be shy students and these can be brushed aside by the louder extroverts you see so I developed that last argument that last point a little bit further with a real-world example and that's what you want to be aiming for because then it it basically presents and enforces your point of view with irrefutable real-world evidence and that's basically it makes your argument makes your whole paragraph much stronger also you will have heard hopefully that these are quite simple ideas but it's better to go for simple ideas that are eloquently expressed rather than complex ideas that are going to slow you down grammatically and possibly even be costly when you lose points or if you lose points for poor grammatical structure obviously referring to the grammatical range and accuracy now here's just a pro tip that what I'm going to do for this paragraph is that I'm going to start with a conjunction so I'm going to say although it can be prohibitively expensive one-on-one -on -one classes are undoubtedly f better for the student okay it's just semi-basic vocabulary there at the moment but I just wanted to demonstrate that I'm going to start with a conjunction um, and then develop the whole paragraph with the pros why am I going to throw in a conjunction there because this is just a stylistic element uh, we talk about these a lot in the online course but it just shows the examiner that I will get full points for grammatical range and accuracy not full points but I'll definitely improve my score by using these conjunctions and and it just is a stylistic element more than anything so it, and it helps you pick up the points now second paragraph the pros of group teaching well it's cheaper it is more cost effective for the student it can create a class dynamic you can learn from other students and um, in a group class there is more pressure on the teacher to perform hmm. and it's also great for introverts because they can hide they can hide at the back and not participate so in the end I decided to go against that last argument I crossed it out in my notes I was like it's going to be a bit too complicated and there's not really that much merit in it um, so I just I just decided to delete that and plus it goes against my earlier point of that the class could be dominated by extroverts so we don't really want that much um, such direct contradiction okay so just to summarize the pros of group teaching are that it's cheaper it's more cost effective once uh, 10 students can get taught at the same time as just one student could get taught with one-on-one -on -one classes you can create a class dynamic students can learn from other students and there's more pressure on the teacher to perform that last one could be debated you know there's more pressure on the teacher to perform perhaps there's less pressure because there's a group class um, anyway what I would do next is pick one of those points um, and then develop it with a real-world example and um, just like I did before with the language class classes and the shy students and then I've got my conclusion which I will probably do a little summary of both paragraphs and then choose a side which I think is best I think in this case it doesn't really matter just as long as I've got a strong argument so I'd probably go for one-on-one -on -one tutoring being a language tutor being an IELTS tutor I know that you can go faster with one-on-one -on -one tutoring and yeah 
um, but obviously it is more expensive. So let's move on to the next one. Many people believe that we should protect all wild animals while others believe we should just protect some of them. Discuss both views and give your opinion. If I were you, now I'd pause this recording and scribble down a few notes. Because this is not an easy question. I had to think about this for a while and I was like, hmm. So I'll just give you the question again. Many people believe that we should protect all wild animals, while others believe we should just protect some of them. Discuss both views and give your opinion. Let's split up the question. So the first part of the question is we should protect all wild animals. That's view number one. View number two is we should protect some of them. Okay, so discuss both views and give your opinions. Now, again, we can fall into this contradictory trap where if I say, yes, we should protect all wild animals because, and then I say, no, we should just protect a few. It's very dangerous because I can start repeating myself, contradicting myself, and before I know it, I, I, I'm in a mess, and I'm panicking, and I'm confused, and I'm frustrated. I see this all the time with students, and I used to do it a lot when I was tackling these task two questions, and after writing out about a couple of hundred, well, probably near a thousand, and then also correcting over a thousand. Yeah, I'd probably say I'd written um, over a hundred task two essays and corrected over a thousand. I see it day in, day out with students um, just getting frustrated with this and it's so heartbreaking. Um, so how do we solve this? Well, once again, we're going to just take, we're going to get our positions crystal clear. So body paragraph number one, yes, we protect all wild animals because, or we should protect all wild animals because. And then body paragraph number two, we should just protect a few because. This way, I'm not going to contradict myself. Let me just emphasize. If I say we should protect all wild animals because, you know, global warming, animals are in danger, and then I said we shouldn't protect a few, what I'm saying is that we need to protect them all. If I say we should not protect a few, I'm basically saying we should protect them all, and I'm going to be repeating the same arguments as I just made. And it's going to be confusing to write and even more confusing to read. So this is why I prefer just to say, yes, we should protect all wild animals in body paragraph one. Body paragraph two, yes, we should just protect a few okay this way i've got different arguments and in the conclusion i can give my opinion so i'm doing exactly what the question says discuss both views and give your opinion now if you haven't thought of a few ideas perhaps post, uh, pause the recording grab a pen scribble some down it will help you if you can't scribble them down perhaps search online here are my ideas body paragraph number one yes we should protect all wild animals because one humans have already damaged the world enough as it is two it could cause an imbalance in nature by just protecting a select few for example in California, deers were protected and wolves were hunted. This led to an explosion in deer numbers, which resulted in overgrazing of the woodlands, ultimately damaging the flora. I don't know if that's true. It sounds realistic. I vaguely remember some kind of similar story. Um, but that's why we should protect all wild animals okay if we'd have protected the wolves as well as the deers we wouldn't have had um, over grazing which is where the animals of the deers in this case eat too much of the woodlands 
Normally the wolves would kill the deers, keep the numbers low, which would basically keep it all balanced. That's that's my argument. Once again, I've got a real world example there. It demonstrates my point and it's just going to strengthen my argument considerably. Also, like the last one, it's a beautiful, beautiful opportunity to squeeze in some topic specific vocabulary. Look at this flora, woodlands, overgrazing, wolves, deers, an explosion in deer numbers. All of these is just amazing vocabulary the, exa the examiner will love to see. Moving on to body paragraph number two. We should protect just a few animals because not all of them are endangered. For example, rats are wild, but protecting them would cause a pandemic. Okay, it's just a real world logical argument. We're not going to start protecting some other wild animals, pigeons, rats, or whatever. It's ridiculous. Body, uh, second point. When I'm adding my second points in the paragraph, I'm going to use words like furthermore. You may hear me say also, this is because I'm obviously using spoken English, but in your essay, you want to be using more formal language such as furthermore. Furthermore, the cost to protect all wild animals is astronomical and could be better spent elsewhere. For example, Australia recently rescinded, ended, a kangaroo protection law that was too expensive to maintain. The money we saved was diverted towards drug rehabilitation welfare programs. I don't know if that's true. It sounds realistic. You know, we're going to cut some money here in the government budget and allocate it over here. Final argument. Humans have caused an imbalance in nature. For example, in the savannah, only elephants needed protection from hunters. The hyenas... Um, are never endangered. Okay, I'll probably change that to were never endangered. Just to keep it consistent with the tenses. After this, I've just got my conclusion to write. Quite straightforward, quite easy. And of course, my introduction, which I would, I would have done before. And if you struggle with organizing your ideas. Perhaps you've overcome this stage of generating ideas. Now you just need to organize them. Well, the online course, we've got a, um, a, a couple of modules where we start out with a very basic framework. Once you've written a few essays uh, with that framework, we give you feedback, you improve, and then we give you the famous C2 template where it's just a matter of dropping your ideas into that template and it's straightforward. Also, if you, if you are, if you're not at that stage yet and you're still struggling with ideas, we've got a whole module on how to solve this. And in the new updated version, it's basically how to solve it and boost your vocabulary simultaneously. So you can start using all this lovely, juicy, high scoring topic specific vocabulary. Final question. Many people believe that individuals are responsible for their own happiness. Hopefully, you might have spotted that as sort of like, okay, that's got to be body paragraph number one. Second part of the sentence. While others think happiness is dependent on other external factors. Hopefully, you'll have spotted that body paragraph number two. Discuss both views and include your own op opinion. Give reasons for your answer and examples from your experience. Be careful here. Examples from your experience is really tricky from the examiners. They don't want examples from your experience of looking after Uncle David in your village, for example. They don't want examples of, from your experience of your friend Peter who was suffering from depression. That's all just 
it's almost like a trick really and personally i'm not a big fan of that um when they say from your experience they obviously i mean you cannot talk about your direct personal experience that a lot this is what a lot of students interpret it as examples from your experience are oh, my personal experience of me you know my interactions day in day out over the last couple of years no it's your it should say something like and examples from your academic reading and experience okay so you should be putting in here examples from your experience you should be talking exactly like we've done before okay like i talked about the example of elephants being protected and hyenas not being protected okay so anyway uh, in this case i'll probably or i could even say i don't know scientific psychological studies show that happiness is derived from effort and uh, winning awards for example okay that's how I would interpret this as my experience I'm just going to say scientific evidence shows that happiness comes from a sense of achievement and effort and well-being okay something like that let's have a look so many people believe that individuals are responsible for their own happiness body paragraph one while others think happiness is dependent on other external factors, body paragraph two. Discuss both views by allocating a paragraph to each of those viewpoints and definitely discussing them, definitely. I'm going to include my own opinion and the conclusion, just so I don't need to, just so I, it's nice, clean and organized. Obviously, I'm going to give reasons because I've got this template I'm following and I'm going to give examples from academia from real world experience not personal stories okay big difference between your experience and your personal stories about your uncle dave right body paragraph one individuals are responsible for their own happiness because i get a position it's taken directly from the question and i'm going to develop it individuals are responsible for their own happiness because Taking this approach makes it easier to correct the situation. For example, if you wait for external factors, you could be waiting a long time. So it's basically, if you believe that your happiness is entirely dependent on outside factors, um, you've got no control over it. Second point, if you realize or believe you are responsible, you can start to take actions to improve your situation. So if, you're, if you believe you're responsible for your own happiness, then you're going to take actions again, similar to the earlier argument. Final point, it is a more responsible attitude to take, i.e. looking after yourself, um, you're a, you are a burden to nobody okay so if i just know that my happiness is just dependent on me alone then i'm not going to be dependent on anybody else to make me happy i'm not going to be a burden to anybody else now here maybe i would probably have to invent some kind of scientific study just to give just a build it out a little bit so how would i invent this scientific study this is a great tip by the way uh, if you don't get it this time um we go into it in more detail in the course but i'll just very briefly mention so my last point it is more responsible it is a more responsible attitude to take looking after yourself you are a burden to nobody what i'm going to do is just make that into a scientific example i'm going to say studies showed um, I don't know, studies from the University of Cambridge showed that when, um, let's see, that when people had an opinion to look after themselves f uh, to maintain their own happiness, um, they found that they were reliant on nobody. This ultimately led to happier students or happier people. 
not the best way but I just did it on the fly but what I'm trying to do is just rephrase that sentence so I'm saying exactly the same but it's in an example format I'll give it another shot so um, a survey by Cambridge University showed that um, respondents yeah, respondents who believed they were responsible for their own happiness ultimately scored higher in the happiness levels than those who believed it was somebody else's responsibility full stop okay now i've definitely fulfilled the question it says from your own experience it says give reasons for your answers for your answer and examples from your own experience cambridge university that was from my own experience i read it you know and that's the reason now i've built up my paragraph i've developed my argument and it's a very strong uh, paragraph now final paragraph or second body paragraph an individual's happiness is dependent on external factors because these are just my notes that's my header that's the position that's the direction I'm going in when I've got it like that it just makes it so much easier to start generating ideas an individual's happiness is dependent on external factors because number one we cannot control 100% of our environment as much as we may try. For example, the recent COVID pandemic has put a lot of people in isolation, working from home, quarantining. This has had an impact on people's mental health. Okay, other factors such as wars, recessions also have a significant impact on a person's well-being. Okay, so I am contradicting what I was saying before because that's there's two different views and making sure that I'm not arguing the same points in both paragraphs um, and in this one it was much easier to think of um, examples uh, from my experience obviously I'm, I'm not obviously but I've never lived in a country that has been at war so it's not my own experience but having read about these you know ha having been aware of this i can call it my own experience it's not my own direct personal experience but it is obviously my deduction um it's part of my experience been it's interpreting it uh, on the news channels conclusion it is both it is not what happens to a person it is how they respond however we have to have combat compassion and take into account the external factors too. Um, I'll probably that's just a summary. I would develop that a little bit more, two or three sentences, put in a sentence about the future as well to pick up some points for the using the future tense. Um, I'd probably start that sentence with "It is predicted that something, something, something." And um, these kind of sentence structures, the sentence guide, the C two templates is full of them. And it just makes it so much easier. Um, so that would be how I'd finish that conclusion. And obviously, the points that I've just mentioned are just rough notes. It all needs to be developed and transferred into an essay, into coherent paragraphs. That step's relatively easy. Um, but it's really important to get this part of the process down to get comfortable with this part of the process because then it just makes the whole rest of the essay writing procedure so much easier. Thank you very much for listening. If you're still struggling with this, please get in contact. When you sign up for IELTS uh, podcast, if you sign up to our newsletter, you'll get a special offer for some low price essay corrections just as a trial offer. And I'd strongly recommend that if you are serious about improving. My name is Ben Worthington. Thank you very much for listening and good luck with your IELTS exam. IELTSpodcast.com.